Uh, hello, in this video I will describe on a project management level how we are developing an extension for ScanDPWA or how we are uh, using an extension that is already available for Magento 2. Well, first of all, on Magento and ScanDPWA, the setup is pretty easy, but it's good to review it in order to understand how to extend it. So we have something very traditional and expected here. That's a traditional Magento stack, PHP, MySQL, Redis, Elasticsearch, recently introduced GraphQL, well, recently more than a year ago, Varnish and Nginx. Uh, here is Varnish is separated for a reason, I will describe it. And then we have ScanDPWA that is downloaded as a web application, as a single page application to a consumer, to a visitor, to a personal device, be it desktop or mobile. So we have a service worker that acts like a proxy, proxying all the data and making sure that we are not requesting something we already got on our device. <laughs> And uh, React components, state of the application, global state that we mentioned in Redux, React components, containers, routes, styles. And then, well, we, why we do have varnish here? Because we use persisted queries, so whenever ScanDPW application is asking some data, from GraphQL, we first check whether this data already has been served before, uh, and we check it by request key, request hash from that we store in Redis. Key value value is response from GraphQL that we cache in Varnish. If it's available, 20 milliseconds it's served. And then whenever something is changed in Magento, Varnish is tightly integrated in Magento. It's like native integration, next text, this cache is invalidated. So that's why Varnish is here. Well, we want to extend it. So let's think about first case when we want to create something completely new that is not available on, on the Magento marketplace. So we have an extension, customer tells well, I need this extension and uh, then this extension uh, has some functionality for the backend like some admin grids or some additional fields for product details or maybe category management, and then some rendering for the user, because, well, we changed something, we added some new fields for the product, or some labels, or some more advanced functionality, like certain uh, customer credit for certain customers, customer groups. So, apparently, this extension touches both front-end and back-end. And now these are living kind of in a different places. One is living on server and another is client-side rendering application. So we cannot like before just render what this particular customer or customers have to see, render it on the server and just serve the HTML to the browser. So now it's different. How different is it? So first of all, we have to differentiate that what is happening on the server is living in Magento. And what is happening on the customer, as well at least rendering, is living on the client, client side. So this extension will be most probably written in PHP, maybe some MySQL, maybe additional tables or additional uh, columns and naturally it should also have a GraphQL layer. GraphQL resolvers uh, because one thing we 
we make this certain features, certain new features, admin grids. We save them in MySQL in the Magento database. But then we have to make this data available for our front-end application, for our single-page applications, Candy PWA. Because GraphQL, this is a kind of data we call, that's a data pipe that is uh, the only way how we are receiving information from a server. So for the creating headless decoupled application, we use GraphQL, that is kind of next generation of REST API. Well, not, not a next generation of REST API. It's a, well, different, better way to get data from a Magento database in a more granular format. So if, if you need just a price for a product, then you don't get all product data and then you take out price. You just get a price, for example. So to make it shorter, we have to create an extension that is managed like a traditional Magento extension that will extend certain features in backend and data structure, and also will extend uh, well GraphQL schema, adding an additional resolver. So by now, customer can manage backend, but frontend is still not aware what's going on there. So GraphQL can provide you data. But nobody yet is asking anything on the front end about this particular. So we have to create a front end extension. Scandi PWE currently is the only uh, PWE solution that allows extending any uh, any part of the theme and also service worker. It's not an override, it's a, a correct way, it's an extending uh, of available functionality. It's available since version 3, there are tutorials and uh, documentation on, on this. So we are writing extension that includes certain styles, so you are component, container to manage the data, uh, possibly tap into application global state, but let's call it on a project manager management level front end extension, skin DPW extension, and it clearly will request certain things uh, from GraphQL. And yes, there will be varnish in between. So a correct way would be to add XTEX. So whenever something gets changed in the backend by a merchant or an update script, then the data that is cached as a result of interaction of customer and server will be invalidated. Uh, but you don't, don't to do anything in varnish, you just add x, -tag, x tags uh, to the backend part of this extension to identify, to tag the particular data that this extension is emitting, is transmitting to the front end, well, to the store, to the application user. And then we can easily find and invalidate this data in varnish that is in between. Okay, that's pretty much is it. That you have one extension for scan DPWA, say we can call it like yeah, front end scan DPWA extension. It's, it's written in React and uses GraphQL queries to get data from a server and to send data there. And you have traditional Magento extension. Because we are talking about decoupling systems, then it makes sense that we have kind of two different packages, one for front-end and another for back-end. Another good question is what happens... No, let's remove it. Let's remove this as well. What happens if I already got 
an extension from a Magento marketplace. It works on Magento 2, 3, 5, 2, 4, or whatever new versions are there. And well, I am just installing it. Well, where? Well, a traditional extension, you install it, and it affects the backend. And also it affects traditional Magento frontend that is not used anymore in PWA. So PWA is a kind of a separate theme, so we are switching from a kind of old school uh, frontend to a new, uh, to the modern one written in React uh, in the form of single page application. Progressive. So yes, this extension is there. It affects database, it's written in PHP, and then we have to create something on the front end. We call it a compatibility extension. And, well, you don't need to do anything with this extension. It's, it's already good, it works. But to propagate the data or let the user interact with this extension in a decoupled, in a headless architecture, you have to create an additional compatibility layer on the front end. For example, if it's something like payment gateway, like a Stripe, so we have everything set up in backends. And on front end, what, is, what we are expected to do as a minimum on a project management level? Well, just to render the credit card input field, name, surname, expiry date, and maybe the CVV code, right? So it's just in checkout, it's an additional component that just renders these fields, making them available for input, nothing really extraordinary, and then an ability to securely pass this data to, uh, to the backend, and then backend will uh, Authenticate this data, reserve funds or capture funds, and will provide a success or error message or whatever notification message that application needs to capture and render to the user. And then also trigger certain Magento mechanisms like make a pending order or confirmed order or paid or send an invoice. But front end impact is really minimal. That's a pretty much uh, three or four input fields and rendering of a message and yeah, then capturing certain re responses or sending requests to uh, Stripe API and, and getting something back. That is likely already done here in the backend, so you don't need to worry about it. You just make sure that the customer can interact with the extension in a headless architecture. So one uh, important things here is that this extension has no good way to interact unless it has GraphQL Resolver. And the reality is it that currently main extension providers are adding GraphQL layer to their extension. So it basically means that GraphQL is a part of their solution and your backend part is perfect. It means that you already have all the kind of data pipes being available for your front-end application, for your front-end needs. So you can request some data, you can send some data through graphical interface, the ones that can be PW, the only ones that can be PW is using to communicate with Magento, just a single type of interface for simplicity and efficiency. And, uh, well, well, yes, perfect. And if, and if not, if this particular extension doesn't have GraphQL, well, then you have to create it. Then your extension is working, but you have to add an additional GraphQL package to it. And, yeah, well, still create this compatibility extension. So the only question is, should you add GraphQL? And in the majority of the cases, yes. So whenever you have 
an, an, an existing extension, you need to create a front end, like React component for it, and most probably also GraphQL layer, uh, but only for the pieces of data that is touching uh, front end. For example, if your extension is advanced reports, then it just works because there is no uh, involvement in a headless. Uh, architecture, we're not sending or receiving anything from the user there, we're just tapping into Magento uh, order tables or in some customer tables, depending on what particular report you want to visualize. Payment extensions, they are also pretty heavy in the backend. You can do a lot of configurations uh, that do not involve the customer. Customer is just sending certain data and you are sending a response. So the impact of this GraphQL work is pretty minimum. Um, well, that's it. We have looked at the way how Scan, DPW, and Magento are tied, how do they set up together, and then looked at uh, what it takes to create a custom extension or what it takes to integrate already available extensions. So to create a custom extension you take you get you still do all the backend work plus GraphQL layer for the data variables, data objects that need to be talked to from the front end and then you make a React component for it to to enable application to actually request this data, render it, send, receive. And if it's available extension from Marketplace, then you don't need to do any backend, of course, in data structures, it's already there. Most probably you have to create graphical resolvers for the data variables that again need to be requested, sent from the front end, and then front end component. Well, that's it. Whenever you have any questions on this, please ask in a uh, Scandic Developer Slack channel or in comments to this video. Thank you for attention.